Okay. So last week we introduced our new unit and we also um, began module nine, which is the first part of it. We didn't actually finish module nine in the lecture. So I'm just going to be going over finishing up module nine today. And then you're going to also move into module 10. So one of the things we didn't talk about in um, module nine last week was neurotransmitters. We briefly talked about it when we talked about neurotransmission and how um, when information is being communicated from one neuron to the next, um, that involves the release of neurotransmitters. But we didn't really get to what on earth are these things? What are neurotransmitters? So before I go into this, I just wanna show you on the guided note sheet where this is. So this will be, um, you are starting your notes here, make sure you do this part first. Um, it's just kind of like a, I guess I would say it's kind of like a do now, um, but answer the questions and then you're gonna get to hear what are neurotransmitters and what do they impact? So heading back to the slides. So what are neurotransmitters? So neurotransmitters are body's chemical messengers. So they are, are literally like chemicals that are moving around in our body. And the messages that they're sending are messages between neurons or they're sending messages from a neuron to our muscles. So they're impacting either the way we think or the way they act, which is kind of the next um, slide. So what do they impact? Well, they impact our thoughts, our actions, and also another really important part of who we are, our emotions. Um, when we think about things like being depressed or anxious or um, a, a lapse of memory or angry, these are all things that we can attribute to the different neurotransmitters that are working throughout our body. So there are tons of different neurotransmitters, but the really important ones that the AP test likes to focus on are these ones. And one of the most important ones first is acetylcholine. That's a weird looking word. Um, shortened term is ACH. So again, these are chemicals. These are chemical names. So that's why they look kind of funky. Um, but they all have different functions and they're necessary to make sure that we properly function. So really quickly going, jumping back over to the notes here, you have the same chart basically in your notes and you are writing the function, which is the part that is outlined in the red here. So the first one is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is one that comes up often um, on the AP test. They like to ask what acetylcholine um, helps with. And acetylcholine helps with learning and memory. It really is all about um, helping us remember information, whether it's how to move our muscles or just simply remembering um, information. So if you don't have enough of acetylcholine in your brain, in your body, so meaning again, these are like chemicals and you have different levels of them in your body. Sometimes some people have more of one and less of one. And that's why you might have certain different conditions. So for example, um, if you don't have enough acetylcholine, your memory is going to be inhibited, meaning it's not going to be as good as it used to be. So when we talk about Alzheimer's disease, which is a disease in which your memory begins to deteriorate as you get older and you start to forget really important things, like honestly, sometimes you begin to forget like who your children are or, or where you are in a certain place. Um, this is because this chemical acetylcholine that you do, you have less of it. You have less of this neurotransmitter. It begins to deteriorate or decline as the, the disease progresses. So again, acetylcholine has to do with memory and it's a really important one. So we all have levels of acetylcholine in our body. Some of us might have more or less. And as we get older, this begins to diminish or decrease just because our body gets older. Um, and this is one of the things that begins to go. So the next one we have here is dopamine. Dopamine um, has a lot of different functions. Um, it helps influence movement, learning. As you can see, there's kind of um, overlap between some of these, attention. And this one is kind of the biggest though, emotion. So dopamine really in, 
influences um, our emotions and also our ability to move as it talks about here and our attention. Um, so if you have like too much of dopamine, so on the other hand, you can have not enough of one, but you can also have too much and that affects you. So if you have too much dopamine, it might lead to things like over an overactive brain or um, like shaking or tremors. So for example, um, if you've heard of schizophrenia, which is kind of like having a split personality, it's, um, we'll talk about this later, but where it's, you, it's a neurological disorder where somebody's brain isn't functioning. They believe that they're in kind of different states, um, their brain is over-functioning because they have too much dopamine in it as part of it, um, is what they're finding out. So this oversupply of dopamine, having too much of it, it can be linked to things like schizophrenia. Um, additionally, though, if you don't have enough of it, so if you have too much, it can lead to like excess movement and things like that, excess activity. But if you don't have enough of it, it can also lead to a decrease in mobility. So like Parkinson's disease is um, like people start to get tremors and they're not able to move as well. So again, these have serious have a serious impact on us um, depending on the levels that we have. Next is serotonin. Serotonin is one that um, is pretty commonly talked about because it's one of the biggest ones that um, is involved in very common mental illnesses such as anxiety or depression. So serotonin, um, it affects your mood, meaning um, like whether you're feeling depressed or anxious or happy or sad. Um, it also has an impact on your levels of hunger, sleep, um, arousal, meaning like um, how alert you are and also it can be linked to sexual arousal as well. Um, serotonin is usually if you don't have enough of it, it's linked to depression. Um, so if you're somebody who is depressed and depression, again, we'll talk more about this later, but meaning that you feel very low and sad for more than like two weeks usually, um, not just feeling sad, Feeling sad is something we all feel, but feeling depressed is something that when people don't have enough serotonin, um, that means that they could be depressed or anxious. So um, certain drugs, um, antidepressants, what they do is basically they you take it to increase the levels of serotonin in your brain to increase this neurotransmitter. So if you're somebody who takes like you ever heard of any sort of antidepressants like Zoloft or Lexapro? Those are ones that help balance out the levels in your brain so you don't feel as depressed on a daily basis. Um, so some anxiety drugs also have a similar impact as well. Um, and these are called SSRIs. They're selective serotonin reuptake in, um, and they basically just level you out. They try to give you those things. Next, we have norepinephrine. So again, these are kind of weird words, but norepinephrine, it helps control alertness and arousal. Um, so if you don't have enough of this, it can also kind of depress your mood. This one, again, is kind of similar to serotonin, but serotonin is the big one that deals with depression. Um, next, you have GABA. That's what we're going to call it because the other name is gamma aminobutyric acid. I don't even know if I said that right, but... <laughs> GABA. GABA um, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And a lot of times, if you don't have enough of this, it can um, lead to seizures, tremors. And the biggest one I always think of is insomnia. Um, GABA, you can take a supplement um, to a lot of times people take a GABA supplement to help them fall asleep. So it's a little bit of a more natural chemical balancing way to um, help those who can't sleep at night, which is what insomnia is. And then finally, we have glutamate. Um, if you, I, when I have, whenever I see glue at the beginning, I always think of glucose, which is about sugar. So we know this is going to be kind of similar. So glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, right? Like think about like glucose as sugar. Sugar is usually something that kind of amps you up in the beginning. Um, it also is involved in memory. But if you have too much of glutamate, it can overstimulate the brain, right? It's like if you eat too much sugar, you're going to be like on a sugar rush. Um, but this can also lead to migraines 
and seizures. Um, so a lot of times if you have too much of this, you want to avoid a lot of food with excess, uh, with excess bad glucose, monosaturides, things like that. Um, so again, these are a lot of different things, but they're all really important and we have different levels of them. Everybody has a different level of these neurotransmitters in their brain. For example, I have a low level of serotonin, so I am more likely to feel depressed and anxious, but some people have a totally normal level of that. And some people maybe even have too much of it, which could lead to overactivity or things like that, um, or they might have more dopamine. So it all just kind of depends on your genetics um, and how your body's producing these things. So this is a really biologically influenced thing. Um, obviously, outside events can impact you, but it's important to understand that if you're somebody or you know somebody that's struggling with a mental illness or some kind of disease, a lot of the times it's, it is because something is chemically imbalanced in their brain. So I think there's this stigma around like depression and anxiety and saying, well, you should just be happier. You can fix it. You can change it. And of course you can always make things better. But the reality of it is there is a chemical imbalance in somebody's brain who has depression or anxiety or any other kind of mental illness. And sometimes drugs are absolutely the right thing for them to take. And when I say drugs, I mean drugs such as like an antidepressant um, or an anti-anxiety medication that helps level it out. So this is something we'll talk a little bit more about when we get into mental, mental illnesses. Um, but these are really important to understand because they do have a huge impact on us. So that's it for module nine. You're going to go into module 10 next, and I'm actually going to take a break from lecturing and you are going to watch two different crash course videos because I think they actually do a better job than I could with it. So that's it for module nine and make sure to, um, make sure to do the check for understanding. It's a really quick one and then you'll move into the module 10 lecture um, guided notes. So that is it.